Hey, my friends. Welcome and welcome. Um, for today's class, I want to get us started up at standing. So you can come up and you can line your feet up on parallel at hip bone distance. Or if you practice with your big toes together, just bring them together and put a little bit of space back between your heels. Go ahead and take a little bit of a squat and then lift back up, roll your shoulder heads out, and then just relax the weight of your arms, close your eyes. Check that your knees aren't locked, you have a little bit of softness. And then we're gonna go through a three-part breath a couple of times. So take a big exhale all the way down to empty. From the bottom of the breath, inhale for one, two, three, and hold. Breathe in again for one, two, three, and hold. Fill all the way up to your chest, all the way to your shoulders. Once you have that full breath, just relax. And then exhale, let it all go, just release it out. Okay, now inhale to your low belly and your low back for one, two, three, and hold. Bring it up into your mid torso, your mid back, one, two, three, and hold. Fill all the way up to your chest, all the way to your shoulders. Once you've got that full breath, just hold and relax. And then now pace the exhale out, so slowly release yourself all the way back down to empty. And then at the end of this breath, you can start your ujjayi breathing. So this is a diaphragmatic breath in and out through the nose, where you're using the throat muscles that you whisper with, that you fog up a mirror with, to slowly draw the air in and slowly release it back out. This breath, you'll start to hear a sound like hollow wind or a sound like ocean waves. And this breath is the way that we start to take all the activity of the mind and we start to focus it in on what's happening with the body. And that's where we talk about the mind-body connection of yoga. So I want you to let your breath be your guide for your practice and then simply take what works from me and leave the rest behind. Bring your eyes open to a soft gaze up front. Inhale to stretch and reach up tall, breathe into mountain. And on your exhale, just bring your right hand into your right hip, shift your hips over to the left, and reach your left arm to the top corner of the right wall. You might explore twisting your shoulders, your gaze. On an inhale, just stretch back up tall, maybe take a really slight arc up and back. And then on that exhale, just bring your left hand to your left hip, shift your hips now over to the right and reach your right arm to the top corner of that left wall. And again, you can leave your shoulders so they're squared forward or you might twist a little bit back, gaze could drop down, or your gaze could twist slightly up. Your next inhale, just stretch and reach up tall in space, breathe in, and as you exhale, hinge out from your hips and just take a swan dive down into a forward fold. Let your fingers connect down to the ground, bending your knees as much as you need to, and just give a generous nod yes through your head. And a generous side to side nod no. And then if you're working with a block, we'll bring the block in front of the feet centered on level one. And we're gonna either take the left fist, palm or fingers to the block or to the ground, bend into your left knee, and then reach your right arm up tall as you press down into your right leg. So as you really straighten through your left right leg, press through your heel. Perfect, yeah, so left knee bending. And then that right leg lengthening and pressing down into it. Gaze will go over towards the right wall. You should get a nice stretch along the outside of that leg up to your hip, twisting through your low back and then twisting through your shoulders. Nice, Britt. On an exhale, just bring your right hand down to the ground. Let's switch things out. So your fist, palm, or fingertips to the block or to the ground. Bending in that right knee lengthening your left leg and reaching your left arm up tall in space. 
gazes somewhere over to the left wall. Remember that breathing. Nice, friends. Just fold it forward when you're ready. Slide the block out of the way. Get nice and heavy in the head and the arms and take that slow motion vertebrae by vertebrae. Roll up to standing. Head is the last thing to come up as the head comes up. Inhaling to stretch your arms tall in space. Breathe in. And on the exhale, bring your hands back down into your heart center. Inhale, breathe in mountain. On that exhale, hinge out from your hips, swan dive down to your forward fold. We're going to inhale to a half lift. This is like a bent over row in the gym. And essentially bend your knees a little bit, press your hands into your legs above or below your knees. And you're pressing off the legs as you extend the spine forward in space parallel to the ground. Gaze is down, crown of the head reaches forward. And we want the core to get nice and strong around that low spine and the shoulder blades to gently tone in towards one another for that upper spine. Take a deep breath in, you're extending and you're strengthening at the same time. And on an exhale, release it down and we'll find a version of a ragdoll frame. So the traditional ragdoll right opposite hand to opposite elbow or bicep, feet at hip bone distance or slightly wider as you sway. You could also make like an elephant trunk, like having your hands linked together and letting your arms hang heavy. Or a third option is interlacing the hands behind the base of the skull, thumbs up the side of the neck and elbows wide. And it might be you try one of those out and then you switch up to something different or it might be you're sticking with one the whole time. The swaying uh, can be side to side, it also might be a little bit back and forth, that can feel really good too. And feel the press into the ground through your feet that, as you press down, sends your hips back and up. Awesome, friends. Let's take another vertebrae by vertebrae roll up so hands are heavy and released. Stacking vertebrae by vertebrae. Inhaling to extend your arms wide and tall, breathe in. And on this exhale, take a squat to Utkatasana chair pose. So if you're using hip bone distance, we wanna keep everything at hip bone distance. If you're going uh, toes together, bring the ankle bones, bring the knees, bring the thighs, all pressing to center line. You wanna feel the shoulder blades slightly toning in towards one another up top. And then we're just gonna do a prayer twist to the right. So hands come into your chest, draw that deep breath in. And as you exhale, you take your twist over to the side. You could plant your left elbow and then press your palms together once that left elbow is onto your right thigh. And then just gently twist the chest open to the right side of the room. So in this class, right, we're going to get into squats. We're going to get into lunges. We always want to support what we're loading into. So in this case, you're loading into your knees, right? If you're in a lunge, you're loading into one knee up front. You want to watch you're not dropping the weight there. That you're placing the weight with the muscles of your legs, with your glutes, using your core muscles, getting nice and strong and supportive as you breathe there. If you want to open your arms up for this last couple of rounds of breath, friends, you can just open your left arm to the outside of the right leg or foot, and that right arm goes straight up in space. You could also do the left hand straight down to the ground, or right hand rather straight down to the ground. Left hand straight down to the ground. Take that last deep breath in, and on your next exhale, we're just going to refold. Inhale halfway up, lengthen through your spine. Exhale to refold, and this time reverse swan dive. Press to the ground, inhale your arms wide and tall. And then come back into our chair pose on your exhale. Reach those sit bones back in space, and again, place the weight in space using the muscles of your legs, using those glutes, using the core. Hands into your chest, draw that deep breath in. And on your exhale, we'll switch our twist out. So this time now coming over to the left side, the right elbow, tricep to the outside of your left thigh, the top of it, palms pressed together, and then just twisting over to the side. 
Nice, Chris. Your gaze can help you here, friends. So if we turn the gaze more to the side, it can help that top shoulder just to pull open over the bottom shoulder. We also want to watch that our knees aren't twisting too much, our hips aren't twisting too much while we're here, while I'm squared forward. If you open your arms up on the other side for these last couple rounds of breath, open the arms up here so that right arm's on the outside of the thigh, foot between the legs, and that left arm is reaching up nice and tall. Your next exhale, fold it forward, release down. Inhale to that half lift, lengthen, strengthen. And then plant your hands, step back to a plank, lower to tabletop. So I'm a big fan of warming up the wrist before we do any weight bearing. So join me on this if you'd like. We're just going to bring the palms to the ground with the inside of the wrist pointing forward and thumbs to the side. You could do side to side, back and forth motions. You could also lean back and peel your hands off the mat back to your fingers. And then slow motion, roll back forward till the heel of your palm presses down. Now a note while we warm up the hands and wrists is that you have full control of how much pressure is going down into the hands. How much pressure is going down into the wrists. Nice breathing. Take the back of the hands down to the ground. Fingers face to the back of the room, thumbs to the inside. Again, just a light press, circles, back and forth, side to side. You can even do that same kind of leaning back and then bringing it back into the ground. And then hero's pose is a great spot just to land at after that to roll your wrists out. So hero's pose, we're bringing our sit bones back to the heels with the tops of the feet to the ground and knees together. And then just with the spine upright, you can get that roll out through your wrists, roll out through your hands. Awesome. Come back into your plank. Find your shoulders above your hands, toes to the back of your mat. If you want to just kind of warm up slightly, it can feel nice just to hinge a little forwards and backwards on the toes and hands, on the balls of the feet. And then finally just settling and holding, feeling those biceps slightly toned to center line, that core nice and strong, a little bit of that length through the, the low back. And then on your toes or coming down to your knees and crossing your ankles, just come halfway down to Chaturanga, bending your elbows, letting the chest lead forward and down. And on your inhale, you're going to lift back up to where you just were, pressing to the ground and pulling through those core muscles. Take a few of these. These are slow motion push-ups. You're just controlling your body weight in space. And then just slowly lower all the way down to your belly. Make sure your hips can comfortably press to the ground. And start to lift your thighs up off the ground. Lift your chest up off the ground and fly your arms backwards. This is our locust pose. We want to find length through the back of the neck here. So the chin's kind of slightly down and back. Nice, Tyler. Those shoulder blades coming in towards one another. You can even add this little baby bend to your elbows and feel your triceps slightly pulling up in space. That kind of adds to your chest also pulling up in space. Cross your ankles. Take the back of the left hand or wrist to the small of your back and extend your right arm forward like you're going to shake somebody's hand. Switch that out. So cross your ankles the other way. Swim your right hand back, left arm forward. Beautiful friends, lower down to the ground. And let's just lay out at the beach for a moment. So just relax the head and the arms. You can leave the feet heavy to the ground or great opportunity to bend your knees. Pick your feet up in space and just draw some big windshield wiper circles, clockwise or counterclockwise. And then while you're doing that diaphragmatic breath, 
you can feel it against the floor. You can feel the rise and fall of that breath against the ground. Make your transition into your down dog. So this could be taking a plank, or this could be taking a tabletop, and then bringing those hips back up tall in space. The distance of your hands to your feet in uh, plank is pretty similar to that of down dog, so it's a nice place to start from. Walk your dog out if you haven't started yet, friends, so letting one heel pull down to the ground is opposite knee bends. Starting to get that pull of the hips back up away from the hands. That tone of the biceps in towards center line, like you're clutching tennis balls between the ears and the biceps. And that spread into the circle of your palm, into your fingers. Bend both of your knees just a little bit and reach those hips back up super tall in space, finding that length, finding that strength through the body. Let the heels now start to pull back down towards the ground, but keep that length in your spine. Keep that strength around it. We'll inhale the right leg back up to a three-legged down dog, pressing your heel up to the wall behind you, letting the front of your right hip bone point down and back. Nice and slow, open the hip and bend the knee. So as you bend the knee, your heel comes to your sit bones. Your knee gently lifts up in space and the inside of your hip opens more to the right side of the room. Watch that you're not twisting and dipping into your left shoulder. Keep it up on level with the right. And watch that your left heel is not twisting to the left. Keep it directly back behind us. On your next exhale, just bring the right knee to the right elbow or tricep, shoulders above the hands. This is essentially a three-legged plank. Hold here for five, four, keep breathing, three, two, one. Inhale, three-legged down dog. And on your exhale, bring your knee over to your left elbow or tricep, shoulders above your hands. Again, like a three-legged plank in for five, four, three, two. Inhale, take it back up, breathe in. And on the exhale, you're going to bring your knee to your forehead, forehead into your knee. Get that back heel high, lift the hips high. Big rounding through the spine like cat. Nice, and then work that foot up between your hand. We're gonna work with a kneeling lunge, friend, so let the back left knee touch down. If you want more cushioning for the back left knee, you can fold the side of your yoga mat in. I like to keep my back toes tucked. Um, some people prefer the back toes to drop down to the ground. What we wanna get is a long enough stance like any lunge where you can press down into your knee and your foot, but you can also tone back into center line. Your hips come slightly forward, you extend the arms up, and what we start to create is this big stretch through the body here. And then we're stabilizing, letting those thighs again kind of tone back in as you press down into the legs. Perfect, okay, you stay right here, or if you wanna play with a supported little baby back bend, interlace the hands at the knuckles, go behind the base of the skull, thumbs down the side of your neck, open the elbows wide, and it's about lifting up and then taking that little tilt back. And it starts all the way down in that right foot and that left knee, and then comes all the way up through your gaze. Nice and strong with those core muscles. Everybody inhale, just back up to that regular kneeling lunge, gaze is forward. And on your exhale, bring your hands down. For half splits, we can back the left knee up a little bit, walk the right foot forward a little bit. And then start to press your heel into the ground. I'm just on my fingertips right here. And you're letting the hips pull back away as you lengthen that right leg out. 
you'll see some folks go for a fold of the spine here. You can totally go for that if you want. You could also go for more of like what I think of as a road biker, where you're pulling that chest up in space, kind of getting a little bit of the tone of your shoulder blades back behind you. And it might feel nice to kind of try both of those out. It might feel nice to lift a little bit up through your chest. That's a little more of kind of like a cow. And then that stretching down gets a little more of the rounding of your spine. Big stretch for the back of that right leg. Oh, and you can add some dorsal flexion in that right foot as well. Your heel pressing down and your toes flexing a little bit back in towards you. We're right on the tail end of this one. Just give it a couple more rounds of breath. Nice Coco. Okay, and then the exit that I've got planned for us is just a wide-legged forward fold opening to the left side of your mat. So all 10 toes face over to the side. Let that weight of the head just relax down. Once you think you've got a nice, uh, like, solid width for your stance, you're feeling good on it, inhale to a half lift. You can typically keep your fingertips pretty much rooted or fly your arms if you want. And then that exhale to refold. And then let's do a, a bit of a pull here. So you could pull against the peace sign fingers against the, the inside of the big toes or even wrap around the big toes as you press down. You could pull outside of the feet or outside of the ankles. You could also pull the floor in front of you or behind you or split that. One hand behind, one hand in front. And then while you're doing a little bit of that pulling through the upper body, we want to feel that press down through the feet and that big lift up through the hips here. Nice breathing. Let go of the pulling and the stretching and let everything just hang loose for a sec. The weight of the head just relax down. Keep those hips, those legs nice and strong, those hips stabilized up in space, but let your spine and arms just relax. Okay, and then before we reverse swan dive with this wide-legged fold, take that inhale, half lift, strengthen your spine, lengthen it. Exhale to refold and then hold navel to spine at empty and reverse swan dive. Inhale, arms wide, stretch up tall, breathe in. And on the exhale, bring your hands down to your chest. Okay, make this a wide-legged squat now. So your feet are going to come in at 45 degrees and you're going to step your heels in underneath your knees. So feet pointing out at 45 from your body, heels underneath your knees. Hands to your thighs, take a deep breath in. And on your exhale, you're going to twist to the front of the room towards me. So press off your left thigh and twist towards the front of the room. And feel that left hand supporting you back there. There should be a nice twist to breathe into. On an inhale, lift back up in space. And as you exhale, now twist to the back of the room. So press off that right thigh. Okay, friends, we're going to inhale to a star. So your legs go out wide where they were earlier. Reach your arms up nice and tall. Breathe in. And then just turn into warrior two on your exhale. So just pivot with that right heel. Point your toes forward. You can take any readjustments through your legs, right? Warrior two is our surfer's pose. You are riding on your mat on the water. And I love that because we want to stabilize. We want to grip down into the board, into the mat. You want to feel the feet going down, the thighs pulling back in, the arms out to support you for balance. 
feel that strength you're creating in your legs and then feel that flexibility you're opening through your hips right here. For your extended side angle pose, right forearm to right thigh, left arm up in space. If you wanna bind this, we take the back of the left hand behind us to the outside of that right thigh and then you're dropping that front elbow, that right elbow down on the inside of the right thigh and then reaching that right hand up and back for your left. You might end up pulling against like your, your pants in two different directions or your fingers might connect, your hands might connect. There's a tendency if you're bound to kind of bow your spine like humble warrior, you want in this one to open the chest to the left side of the room. Stack the left shoulder to the right. Reach the crown of the head forward, gaze to the side. Nice, Jane, when you are ready, inhale back up into that warrior two. And then for triangle pose, straighten out the right leg. I'm gonna get a block over on level three to the outside of my right ankle. But essentially, once your legs, front leg is straight, you can just reach as far forward as you can through that right arm and then bring your right hand down to the block on level three or two or one or hand to the ankle or the shin or fingertips, fist or palm to the ground. Open your wingspan from the floor to the sky. Let those shoulder blades gently tone back in. Your spine is like a crossbar right here, hips reaching back, crown of the head reaching forward. And then you're pressing into that right foot, drawing the hips back as you're rooted into that back left leg. Beautiful pose. Stay with that breath. And the way, again, that gaze can help you here, right? If you turn your gaze a little more to the side, you can feel that top shoulder really stacking over. You can even twist your gaze up a little bit. On an inhale, just come back up to your warrior two. Bring your left hand back behind you in space or to your hip or thigh. Reach your right arm straight up. And then you can bend your elbow into that reverse warrior and tilt your head back. And then explore the depth of your lunge here. Explore the support of your legs as you're lifting up through the torso, lifting up through that right arm. Awesome, Sharsty. Stay with your breathing. On an exhale, friends, cartwheel down to a low lunge position. Vashistas in the side plank with the left hand as your base. So we can turn onto the outside edge of the left foot, stack the right foot onto the left. Your left hand is right underneath your left shoulder, right arm extends up. You could also drop your left knee to the ground with your toes out to the side. Right arm up in space, and if you wanted to balance that one, if you got the kickstand, you could reach your right foot off the ground to the back of the room. As we're holding that side plank, draw those hips up away from the ground, stay with your breathing. Nice cat. Our transition, we turn into plank. Exhale halfway down. Press to the tops of the feet, inhale upward facing dog and then tuck through the toes and reach back into that down dog. Pull those hips back up away from the hands as you press in, find that length back to your heels. Inhale the left leg up to a three-legged down dog, press back and up through your heel, front of your left hip points down and back. And then open the hip and bend the knee so your heel comes towards your sit bones. Knee is lifting and twisting up so the inside of your hip is pointing a little more to the left side of the room. Again, watch that your right shoulder's not twisting and sinking. Get it strong with the left. Watch that your right heel's not twisting out to the right. Point it directly back behind you. Your next exhale, friends, just bring your left knee to your left elbow or tricep, your three-legged plank. We're holding here for five, four, three, two, 
Inhale back up, three-legged down dog. And then exhale your knee over to your right elbow or tricep, shoulders above your hands for five, four, three, two. Inhale, reach up. On the exhale, bring the knee to the forehead, forehead to the knee, hips lift high, back heel lifts high. Feel that nice rounding in that low back in particular. Okay, we'll work the foot up between the hands to that low lunge, walk it up. And then your back right knee is going to touch down. You can fold the mat in for more cushioning. You can keep your back toes tucked or the top of the foot to the ground. Get those legs out wide enough that as we start to come up into our, low lunge, or our kneeling lunge, you can even bring your hands to your thighs to start with. That again, you're feeling a little bit of that stretch through the legs and that's kind of coming forward, getting that stretch down through that right thigh and then feeling that those legs stabilizing. And then you work more with that stabilizing as you start to bring your arms up. And then if we're going for that baby back bend, interlace at the knuckles, slide it back behind the base of the skull, thumbs down the side of the neck, elbows wide. And again, it's about that lifting up and then just tilting back but starting from the press and the pull down through the feet and the legs, the core nice and strong. Nice paps, take a couple more rounds. Inhale just to our normal kneeling lunge, arms up, gaze forward, and as you exhale, come down. Okay, for those half splits, slide your right leg back a little bit. Left heel comes forward. And then we're pressing into that left heel as we lengthen the left leg, pulling the hips back. Blocks, if you got two of them, you can use them right where like your hands would be. If you want to use one block, sometimes you can kind of pull it right out in front of you as well on level two or level one. Think about maybe a little bit of that dorsal flexion in that left foot. And then those options with your spine, more like a road biker or more bowing that spine forward, out and down. Right on, amigos. As you wrap this one up, you can start to turn your body over to that wide-legged forward fold. Stay in your wide-legged forward fold. Otherwise, join me in frog. Let your knees come down to the ground. You want your knees slightly wider than your hips, and if you want more cushioning for the knees, you're gonna fold the corners of the mat in for them. And then the insides of the feet are to the ground a little bit wider then the knees, lower down to the elbows, to the forearms. And then you're dropping to your head to look back behind you and letting the sit bones pull gently towards the back of the room. One more thing that you can throw in in frog is baby cat and baby cow through your spine. One rocks your hips a little bit forward, like rotates them forward, and one rotates your hips a little bit more back so you get into different angles of this stretch. Give it just a couple more rounds of breath.
And then as you come out of this one, the wide-legged fold should feel really nice to come back into. You can just hold the wide-legged fold, or it might feel nice to do a little bit of skandasana. So that's like bending into that back right knee, turning onto your left heel. And this one, my attention with this one is more just kind of switching between them a little bit quicker. Because these could be their own poses into themselves that we could sit and hold out for a while on each side. But just kind of using them more to get a, a, that kind of warm up back in your legs after that hold. So let's meet up in our wide legged forward fold. Take an inhale halfway up, lengthening through the spine. Exhale to refold. And then reverse swan dive. Inhale your arms wide and tall. Exhale, just bring the hands down into your heart center. And then our wide-legged squat, you're going to turn your feet out at 45. Bring the heels in underneath your knees. Start with your hands to your thighs and give your hips a little bit of a shift side to side just to get the stance at a, a nice width. But then start to bring your arms up in space. Either hands back to your chest or open your arms up to the sides of the room and let the shoulder blades tone back in, maybe bending your elbows a little bit. And you can leave the heels to the ground, or you might bring the feet in just a little closer, lift the heels off the ground so you're on the balls of the feet. Think about your thighs slightly rotating up and back, so you're grounded and rooted into the pinky edge of the feet right here. Nice cat. Last uh, two, three rounds of breath. Strong with those legs. Cool. Okay, step back to your star. So open up, breathe in. And on an exhale, we've got our warrior two to the front of the room. So again, dropping down on that surfboard, getting the center of gravity nice and low. Strong off that back right leg. Feeling that lunge in your front left leg. Feeling the way those legs can tone back in towards center line. And that opening through your arms. Even your shoulders being able to slightly pull back in towards one another. Helping to support that upper spine. And then for our extended side angle pose. You can bring that left forearm to the left thigh with the right arm up or on an angle. Or to bind, reach that right arm tall. Drop the back of the hand to the outside of your left hip or thigh, and then lower that left elbow to the inside of your left thigh. Reach the left hand back for the right. Nice, Amy. And you might be pulling your pants in like two different directions, or your fingers might be grabbing and pulling against one another in that bind. As we inhale back up into our warrior two, we're going to straighten out the left leg and set up triangle. So if you're going for that block, you can set it up on the outside of your ankle. And then we're just, with that left leg straight, hinging forward and bringing the left hand down, whether it's to the block, the ground, your shin. Open the wingspan up nice and tall. Feel that opening through your chest, that support of the shoulders behind you. That press through the left leg, hips drawing back, spine coming forward out the crown of the head, and letting that breath just move through it. Start to lunge in that front left leg. Bring the sp uh, spine up. Wrap the right arm behind you or to the outside of the hip or thigh on that back leg. Left arm can reach up tall from that lunge. And then you can bend your elbow, tilt your head back. 
find that reverse warrior. And as you kind of lift and reach upwards and take the gaze and the focus upwards, keep super rooted. Find that depth of that lunge right here. On your next exhale, cartwheel your hands down to your low lunge position. And then Vashistasana side plank. The right hand is your base, so we're onto the outside edge of the right foot. You can bring the shoulder right above the hand. Reach your left arm up tall. We can kickstand it right to so your right knee below your hip, the toes to the side. You can keep that left foot to the back to the ground or lift it off the, and reach it to the back of the room. And then turn into your plank. Exhale halfway down. Root to the tops of the feet. Inhale upward facing dog. And then press back into your down dog. Let's find our child's pose. So let the knees come down to the ground and open wide. Tops of the feet to the ground. Big toes together. Sit bones back to your heels. Forehead relaxed. Arms out in front of you. You can find a little push or pull through the arms on the tail end of this one. The push, as you just kind of drive forward, it pushes the sit bones closer back towards the heels. The pull could be where one arm's kind of pulling while one arm pushes or vice versa. And then nice and slow, we're going to rise out of that child's pose. Swing your legs forward. If you have a block, it's going to go on the thin setting between your thighs. And then come onto your back and then reach your legs straight up. Reach your arms straight up, head and shoulders off the ground. So hips and low back are pressed in, head and shoulders are off and lifted, arms are up. You should feel that core, those core muscles Nice and engaged right here. If your neck needs support, we can throw one hand back behind the base of the skull, but leave the other arm extended and reaching. Take your legs slightly over to the right and then reach both of your arms forward outside of that left thigh. Come back up and switch it out so your legs tilt a little to the left. Both arms forward and out on the outside of that right thigh. And then friends, we're going to rest in reclined cobbler's pose for a moment. If you want to lift it up a little bit, take that block on level one underneath the sacrum. But we're just making that uh, diamond shape with the legs, bottoms, the feet together, knees are wide. Relaxing the weight of the head and the arms. And then just staying with those inhales, staying with those exhales.
pressing the feet into the ground. Just lift the hips off the block if it's there. Slide it out of the way. Put that block back in between the thighs if you're working with it. And this time we're working with a leg lift, friends. So the legs are extended on a diagonal. Hands behind the base of the skull, head and shoulders up off the ground. Find that breathing. Feel that low back pressing into the ground, pulling into the ground. Use your breath. And then grab your hamstrings and take that leg lift up into Navasana boat pose. Your hands can stay behind your legs or we can open the arms up. You wanna feel those shoulder blades slightly toning back and in towards one another for that upper back. Knees bent, you can extend the legs out straight if you like. Last couple rounds of breath. And then we'll take cobbler's pose from the sit bones, so Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. Finding the front edge of the sit bones as the bottoms of your feet connect together. Pulling against the shins to lengthen the spine up tall on an inhale. And then taking that exhale just to hinge out from the hips Bow forward and then walk your hands down to your feet like they're wrapped around reading the book, a book. So thumbs on the inside, fingers on the outside. Or to your toes or to the mat. Elbows can come to the insides of the knees and rest or give a gentle press down. Elbows could slightly hook to the front of the shins as well and slightly pull back, sending the spine forward. Connect with your breathing, so let the breath guide you into your pose. Nice deep inhales, nice long exhales. Nice and slow, just start to roll up vertebrae by vertebrae. Cross through your ankles, come forward, step back into your down dog. Inhale that right leg up tall in space, deep breath in. And on your exhale, you're gonna step the foot up between your hands, find a low lunge to a high lunge. We'll take a cactus position with our arms. Again, feeling that press down through your feet, that tone of your thighs back in. And then for eagle arms, just bring your right elbow forward and wrap your left elbow underneath the right, looking for the palm, wrist, or thumb of the right hand to hook onto. You can also do a bear hug, opposite hand to opposite shoulder. We'll take this to a one-legged balance, inhaling the left knee up in space to a one-legged mountain with eagle arms. This is a great place to stay. You wanna watch that your elbows aren't dropping low, they're lifting up. 
or wrap your left thigh over your right thigh and then start to squat in your right leg but keep your spine straight up. This is eagle legs, the full eagle. And you can flex your left foot out to the side or press the outside of the foot to the outside of the calf or do a snake wrap of the top of the foot back behind the calf. And eagle is such an interesting balance pose where you're pushing and pulling against your body in these binds to find your balance. Beautiful breathing. Inhale to bring the arms and the left knee up to a regular one-legged mountain. And then let's swim back to a low lunge position on that exhale. So for a half pigeon, you could take your leg up to three-legged down dog, your right leg, and then cross the shin, or simply walk the right foot to the left and drop the knee to the right. You can also go onto your back into reclined pigeon. It might feel nice to just get up a moment on your hands, lift up to your chest and set your legs up. Getting that right knee wide outside of your right hand, backing that left leg up a little bit, feeling the top of the foot or the side of the right foot to the ground. And then from there, right, making those moves down onto your elbows, to your forearms, your head down to your hands or to a block. To keep your hips from twisting and dipping to the left or to the right, just having the, the top of your left leg pointing down to the ground is a nice guide. And as the top of your left leg is pointing down, you might feel your right sit bone pulling a little bit to the back right corner of your mat, feeling a little spread through your hips. And again, in this nice deep stretch, just allowing that breath to guide your body into the pose. Pressing up to your hands, just drop down into your right hip. Bring the legs forward. Give a little roll out through that right ankle or movement through your thigh. And then for a one-legged seated forward fold with your right leg extended, leave it out and then bring the left foot inside of your right thigh like tree pose. Note how you can feel your left leg pressing down and back, kind of sending your spine up and out. We're gonna use that in a sec. So right hand back behind you, just out from your right hip, inhaling that left arm up tall, and on that exhale, diving forward, and we can add bend into that right knee. You can connect to the outside of the foot, to the toes, outside of the ankle, outside of the thigh, to the mat. Left leg, you can feel giving a gentle press down. And again, it might be that you add some nice deep bend into that right knee. You can always toy with it throughout the pose right, figuring out what the right amount is for you. And just know that we're in glacial movement with our body. 
So inside of that glacial movement, there's just plenty of time to get to be with your body as it is right here and now. And keep that link, keep that breath. Inhale just to reach the arms tall, bring your spine upright. And on that exhale, just bring your hands down into your chest. We're gonna make our way all the way forward into downward facing dog. Inhale that left leg back up. And on an exhale, step your foot up, find your low lunge. Rise up into your high lunge and start to make the goal post shape with your arms. Get strong with the legs, support that front knee. For your eagle arms, your left elbow is forward and your right arm is wrapping underneath and around looking for palm, wrist, or thumb <coughs> or opposite hand to opposite shoulder. We'll play with our balance here so we're gonna bring that right knee up in space. And then if you want a full eagle, wrap your right thigh over your left thigh. Start to take that squat in the left leg, but keep the spine straight up. Elbows lifting tall and finding that push and pull against your own body. Awesome, Amy. Nice, guys. All right. Rise up when you're ready. Find that one-legged mountain. Breathe in. And we've got our low lunge position. Got to have fun with balance. For your half pigeon, you can take your left leg up to three-legged down dog and cross it. Or walk the left foot to the right and bring your left knee down to the left. Again, maybe take a little bit of time up on your hands just to set your legs up. Feel that knee is out wide. Top of your foot or the side of your foot is to the ground. Adjust that angle from the top of your mat. Maybe back the right leg up a little bit. And then when you're feeling it, bring it down. And we've got that recline pigeon option on our back as well, right? Left ankle just going over the top of your right thigh. Interlacing your hands around the hamstring or shin on the right leg. And use that breath.
Take that press up to your hands, lift up to your chest, and then drop down into your left hip and bring your legs forward in space. Give a little roll out through the ankles. And then leaving that left leg extended, take the right foot inside of your left thigh, find the front edge of the sit bones, press your left hand out and back from your hip. Inhale your right arm up. You can already have some bend in, the, in that left knee. And on your exhale, you're diving forward, connecting to the outside of the foot or the leg. And letting that spine either take that bow or again, as I was saying earlier, a lot of these times we have also that option more like a road biker lifting up through your chest, but finding that big stretch through your low back. You can feel that right leg gently pressing down and back, bringing the spine forward. Inhale the arms wide and tall, lift up through the spine. On the exhale, just draw your hands down into your heart center. The rest of class, we're just taking on our back, so extending those legs out, bringing the knees into the chest, wrapping your arms and giving that little rock side to side. Stack your knees over to the right, onto the outside edge of your right hip. Reach the left arm to the left and twist the gaze out to the left. And just let your breath snake its way through your spine here. Bring the knees up to center, wrap your arms, give yourself a little bit of that rock. And then we'll switch it out, stacking the knees over to the left, rolling onto the outside edge of the left hip, extending that right arm out to the right and taking your gaze out over your right fingertips. Left hand just gently pulling on the top and outside of that right thigh. Feeling the weight of the body just relaxing to the ground.
out of this twist, just come onto your back. Take a final hug of your knees into your chest, a final rock out on the low back, on the hips. And then we'll move to our final resting pose, our corpse posture, Shavasana. So just laying your body flat out, letting the legs just extend and relax, the head relax, arms at your sides relaxed. And as we create this physical stillness, we invite our mind and our emotions into this place of completion. So into this place of stillness, into this deeper place of peace. Start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. You can reach your arms behind you or straight up in space and just roll out your ankles and your wrists. And then roll the weight of your body onto your side. Curl up to a fetal position and find a deep round of breath. cross-legged position or whatever pose you want to end your class with, just like we were about to do a seated meditation. 
So finding that root and that base from the front edge of the sit bones, letting the spine come up tall from there, rolling the shoulder heads out, opening up through the chest, creating that length all the way up to the back of the neck. Friends, have a beautiful rest of the night. The light in me greets the light in you. Namaste.